Okay, fantastic. And um, and I just ask, uh, I said a little prayer before this uh, this uh, meeting here because we have technology involved and we have another panelist here. So this is uh, something new that we're doing. We did practice, I promise you beforehand, and we're expecting everything to go great. But if there's any subluxations along the way, thank you for your patience. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, I'm honored to have Meredith Minix. She's the owner of Fitness Together in Fairfax. And this is all coming full circle on Facebook. If you've ever had one of those pictures of a, a memory pop up uh, this past week, it was Lynn and I. Lynn, get a little bit closer here, all right? People love seeing Lynn. And um, it was uh, seven years ago. And uh, this is when um, Lynn was working for Meredith at Fitness Together and uh and part of that uh, organization and things like that so we were i was actually doing a talk i believe over at fitness together and so it's just all coming full circle right here so uh lynn she has personal story about her lower back and then living in the corporate world and planes going back and forth from dc area to new york and texas okay and and really four or five days a week outside of DC and then traveling back and forth paid a toll on her body and she definitely knows and uh, has learned how exercise can bulletproof her lower back and how chiropractic care can help bulletproof her lower back and then she has learned a lot through the personal training world Lynn is a certified personal trainer if you did not know that she wears she's a woman of many hats and so I have her on here um, to join in too that she may add some additional tips from her vantage point to help you all with your uh, health and wellness goals. And we have Meredith here. And Meredith, we just wanna say thank you so much for joining in. Thanks for being here. And um, I'm gonna turn this over to you just a, a minute or two. Why don't you introduce yourself and uh, um, introduce yourself to our clients here and uh, then we'll get started. Well, many of you already know me. Thanks for having me, Dr. Brandon and Lynn. Thanks for uh, being a longtime friend and a client and uh, a teacher, really. I'm owner at Fitness Together in Fairfax. I've been practicing uh, health and wellness with and helping people for about, uh, I don't know, we'll say since 1991-ish, some, somewhere in that range. Uh, I've owned this studio since 2011, uh, 2012, somewhere in there. And I've been personal training since I was uh, um, in my early 20s. I uh, grew up in West Virginia and moved over here to the D.C. area and have been here ever since. We're located in the Fairfax studio, but I've also been in Tyson's and done some work there as well. Yes, and I know your work personally because I'm a client and I just have nothing but great things to say of your system that you have to help people with high level health and wellness. So very honored to have your talents and your skill sets to share uh, with our clients here to help them in their health and wellness journey. So thank you so much for joining us here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Sure, you got it. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and let me uh, pull up the... Uh, um, PowerPoint here that we're going to be going off of a couple slides that is going to keep us on task here. Okay. 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 Awesome. So bulletproof your lower back. Uh, the first 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to give you some background of why this is such an important topic to help you become an understander of what's going on in your body. We know your body's smart, it's intelligent. And when it gives us some signs of pain, dysfunction and things like that, we know there's a reason for it. And it's wise for us to slow down and figure out what the root cause of this is and then give you some tools to help uh, you become healthier and stronger. So when we talk about bulletproof in your lower back, hands up if you have one or multiple of these things going on. If you have low back pain or tight muscles, lost range of motion, if you have stiffness or leg pain, swelling, burning, numbness, you're in the right place. And if you know somebody that suffers from this and they're not here, make sure you share this information with them uh, afterwards. You know, 
we know that over the past year plus, your lifestyle and our client's lifestyle has changed radically. I want you just to pause for a moment and be thinking over the last 13 months since the lockdowns were in place, how has your lifestyle changed? Had you been doing something that was working really well for you, for your health and wellness, and then you were forced to stop? Had there been new stressors that have been added to your life? If I were to ask you to raise your hand for those that over the past year, has life been more stressful or more stressful? I'm sure that we're gonna get 110% of the people on the line here today to say, yes, doc, my life has been more stressful. So have you been more sedentary? Have you been more glued to your computer or your phone? You're in Zoom meetings. They, there actually is a diagnosis out there called Zoom butt. Anybody there suffering from Zoom butt out there? So Zoom butt, then there's you know the tech neck um, and all these other things that are coming up because we knew that technology and sitting was a new smoking was already bad, but then this whole stress to the system uh, kids learning from home. Do we have any parents out there that become micromanagers of their kids? And uh, ha my hands are up there. Both of my kids had been doing virtual learning. Now they're back to four days. Do we have any teachers on the line? Teachers with kids? Uh, you know, how has your life changed? Think about it in relation to your health and your health outcomes, because we've seen radical shifts in people's behaviors over the past year that has been contributing to a lot of conditions, especially the low back issues. I wanna be very clear is that when we're talking here tonight, we are going to be talking about the promotion of health. There are three tiers when it comes to healthcare. The bottom layer is treatment of disease, which keeps people from dying. There is the prevention of disease, which is like no hugs or high fives, hand washing, social distancing, wearing masks, treatment of disease, prevention of disease, are all very appropriate at certain times and makes a lot of sense, but neither do anything to promote the health of the individual. Everything that we're gonna be talking about tonight, your exercises to bulletproof your lower back is to help strengthen your body, to help make it more adaptable and resilient to the stress that you're placing it, placing it under each and every day. So let's get into a little bit of anatomy. I find that my clients that understand the most about their health and their wellness uh, very simply get the best results. There's a greater awareness here. So what we're gonna be talking about when we say the lower back is the L spine, the lumbar spine. And that's the bottom five vertebrae right here in your lower back. And if we were to bring uh, the spine up right here, we're talking about this lower part here within the back. And you can see that you have the bone, which is a very hard material, and the middle is the disc, which is more flexible. That's this part right through here. There's a big hole, that's the nerve hole, that allows the nerve to exit. So we want that really big. And then you see all the uh, anatomy of the bone where the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles attach to help make your lower back and your body work properly. Your spine simply is your suit of armor. And that suit of armor is there to help protect those delicate nerves from the uh, spinal cord and out to those individual nerves that go to every organ, tissue, and cell. Let's face it, those lower back nerves not only go to the muscles and to your lower back, but they travel to the buttock. Anybody here have a pain in the butt, a literal pain in the butt? Some of you might be thinking, yes, I have a figurative pain in the butt, but they go right to the buttock, they go down the leg, so back of the hamstring, inner thigh, front of the thigh, the knee, all the way down to the feet. And then these nerves also go to specific organ systems. So these nerves in your lower back, they go to your colon, they go to the large intestine, small intestine, they go to your bladder, they go to your reproductive organs. So yes, when there is dysfunction in those organs, it can be related to impingement of those nerves in your lower back. So let's break down the anatomy because you probably heard a disc bulge and disc herniations and, and so on and so forth. And this is a big issue for many today because you might be one cough, one sneeze or one pair of socks putting them on in the morning away from a disc herniation. So let's take a look at the anatomy. A healthy normal disc has a very fibrous outer ring 
and a gel center. I want you to be thinking about a jelly donut. And what we want is the jelly of the donut to be confined within the center and not pushing out. So the disc is actually a spacer. That's the purpose of it so that it creates a large nerve hole. So the nerve that comes right off the spine has ample room to exit and, and function uninterrupted and uninterfered with. But because of modern life being unnaturally stressful and the physical, mental and emotional and chemical stressors that we put the body under, it starts to break down and can cause a problem here. And that over time, you can have a normal healthy disc then start to bulge. And the bulges is where the disc bulges beyond its normal anatomical limits right there. That means the jelly is still confined, but it starts to narrow down. This then creates a problem with this nerve hole, which is kind of like I-66, which is normally four lanes, and then it compresses down to three, down to two. What happens on these interstates around here in Northern Virginia that when you take max capacity and you start to narrow it down. Yes, you get subluxations on the roadway, which leads to other problems there. Things start to get backed up and clogged. If this problem is left alone and it takes about five to 10 years from a normal healthy disc to get become a bulge and start to break down, you can then lead in another five to 10 years to have what's known as a disc herniation. And this is where then the gel from the inside starts to squirt out to the outside. The outer walls have become so weak and then that starts to press out. The problem is, is when the disc starts to push out and into that nerve hole right there, you can start to have nerve impingement. And when there's only the weight of a dime of pressure, which is not very much, a weighted dime of pressure on that nerve, it can reduce nerve flow and function by up to 60%. And that is not a good thing. That's when you start to really get the pain in the butt. This is when you start to get the pain down the leg. That's called sciatica when it travels down the back of the leg to the bottom of the foot. Or you could get numbness, tightness, weakness, tingling, any of those symptoms down the leg. Or you can start to have some organ dysfunction. You could get constipation. You could get diarrhea. You could get bladder issues. You could get reproductive organ issues so on and so forth can be the end result of these nerves getting impinged. And of course, if it goes bad enough and long enough is that the motor unit, the bones, then they just start to fuse because it's become so weak right there. So that's the disc herniation. And we can start to, and this just uh, is a slideshow to actually show what is happening when that disc is being irritated in the lower back and then how it affects that sciatic nerve branch going down to the leg. Well, how do we know these things? Well, we can start to see the degenerative changes on the x-rays. If you take a look at the x-ray all the way to the left, it shows a normal curve. And then the, uh, the picture to the right is the x-ray where it's showing some shifting going on. So we can check alignment, we can check uh, degeneration and things like that. But it's really the MRI that gives us definitive information of the health of the disc and so we could see exactly what's going on. So if you take a look there at the far right, you could see where that black gel like in between the bones, the bones are the big rectangular white boxes there. You could see where the gel is pushing back. That is a disc herniation. And you see there's slip disc right there because there's truly no slip disc. That's just layman's term but it's basically the disc is having a part, the gel going in a place that it should not. But this is how we can diagnose and determine whether there is a disc issue associated with uh, the problem that's going on. So again, these are the signs, these are the symptoms, these are the downstream effects of the underlying root cause right through here. And so what are our options out there? You know, I hear uh, many people say, hey doc, should I take this drug? Should I take this pain reliever? Should I take this opioid? Should I take this steroid? Should I get this injection? And I always have to say is, I don't know. What's your goal here? What are you looking to accomplish? Because depending on what you're looking to accomplish will determine what pathway that you go down. 
you can guarantee you can guarantee that our route is going to be the most natural, most effective solution and holistic approach and conservative approach before we start adding in poisonous drugs or needing to do uh, very radical procedures such as surgery. It's sometimes those things are needed. Sometimes things have degenerated so far, but we are going to try everything that we can to prevent that in a natural holistic approach. And then in addition to your chiropractic care, provide certain activities such as stretching and strengthening exercises to help strengthen the spine, to help your alignment, help your adjustments uh, hold better. So how bad is this low back issue? Well, I pulled up some stats here today. 80% of Americans will at some point experience back pain. That's a lot of people. And 35% of people in the population at any given time suffer from low back pain. And this isn't just the low back pain that you just push through. This is the one where you are needing to work around this issue. This has had such a direct impact on the lifestyle, whether it's impacting your family, whether it's impacting your personal well-being, uh, such as your mindset, your sleep, so on and so forth, uh, exercise ability or lack thereof to be doing these things. It may be affecting your performance at work. It may be affecting a hobby, so on and so forth here. And what do you think has happened over the past 13 months with this whole COVID pandemic? Do you think the, low, the incidence of low back pain and these chronic issues have gone up or up? Yeah, without a doubt, people are under more stress and they're living more incongruent uh, to a healthy lifestyle, which is causing their body to rapidly decrease and break down faster and faster these days, which is definitely not the direction we want to be going because we wanna be building health from the inside. So our body, including our immune system stays as healthy as possible to keep us adapting in case we were to ever come across a virus such as the coronavirus there. All right. And so the next thing here that I want to bring up is uh, the low back pain. Uh, the incidence has been on the rise and it's more common in females. One third of females suffer from low back pain and 31% of men report that it affects their work. Only 20% of females. females. So clearly uh, the females are tougher there, right? And so 54% um, of low back pain sufferers are desk workers. Hands up if you are, are stuck to a desk. Um, and phone, laptop, so on and so forth. You know, people's ergonomics have changed radically. You know, they're sitting with their laptop in the bed, they're on their sofa, they're laying down, they're on the side, uh, sideways, uh, so on and so forth. And then 50% uh, of women experience back pain when they're pregnant. Those are things that we get to help with. What are the costs of this? $50 billion are direct costs, $100 billion are indirect costs. So it's a lot of money and, um, we, we have some solutions here for you to help make your life work better. Okay, so, you know, you've been seeing this prior to the COVID uh, pandemic, this was all over the news, but you guys know the opioid crisis out there. Let's not kid ourselves. With this crisis and stress and the emotional toll that this whole pandemic has taken, the lockdowns, the businesses, the economics, and and so on and so forth. The social distancing, being away from people has driven people to sedate more and rely more on these very dangerous addictive drugs. So you can see the rise of these opioid dry, drugs over the year, uh, years and over this past year, it's only become intensified. 40 people, uh, these were stats previously uh, to the COVID, but you can guarantee that this is higher now, but 40 people were dying a day because of narcotic prescription overdose and you can see with this red line, this is the deaths involving opioids. People trying to address their pain issues, including low back, um, with drugs, trying to cover up the symptoms and maybe feeling better temporarily until then the underlying problem continues to get worse and worse and worse. So the overdose, uh, um, overdose deaths involving opioids has risen dramatically over the past uh, couple decades. It's all, it was all over in the news. You don't see it as much. There's so much stuff about COVID and, and the vaccines and everything like that these days. This is kind of getting buried. 
but make no mistake about it, it's still out there. And then there's another radical procedure is that surgery is the option. And, uh, you know, we want to avoid having to, you know, do any of these radical procedures as much as possible. So we have a better way and we're going to be teaching you specific things that you can start doing tonight. I hope you have your gym shorts or your workout clothes on tonight because we are going to ask you at home or wherever you're at, as long as you're not driving and trying to do these things, to participate in doing these activities so you can start to feel what it's like to do these things properly and you can start to have a handle on these things. What I know is that my clients that get the best results over time are the ones that engage. And if you have questions along the way, type it up in the chat box. So when it comes to what should you do, make sure you're asking great questions to your doctors there. What are the risks? What are the costs? Uh, what's the cost benefit ratio here? Um, what is the effectiveness uh, here? Uh, what are my expected outcomes? Can I interview 10 of your patients? What did the research say? What are my options? And is this treating my symptoms or is it the cause of my problem? Because more and more we start asking ourselves, are we masking the actual real problem? So remember, these are signs and symptoms and signals that the body are give it, is giving you and the body signals are the symptoms of an underlying root issue. What's above the water right here is the tip of the iceberg. What's below the water is the root cause of your lower back issues. And ask yourself over the past 13 months, what direction is your health going in? I want you to be placing yourself here. Neutral is zero. High level health and wellness is plus 10. Premature death is minus 10. Where are you at? Where are you at this month compared to last year? Are you heading more towards high level health and wellness and becoming stronger day by day? Or are you actually slipping and becoming weaker and losing your health day by day? Very important question to ask. We're gonna give you some things to do tonight to help you achieve high level health and wellness. And as we like to say here, don't let your spine get on your nerves. Remember, Pain is only 10% of your nervous system. That's it. So you can have disc bulges, you can have disc herniations going on and actually not exhibit any symptoms. And likewise, you can start to be seen with pain. And when your pain goes away, it doesn't mean that the underlying root issue has completely healed. As we mentioned that your nerve, uh, spine is your suit of armor that protects your delicate nervous system. And your nervous system is like the electrical box. You have your skull that protects your brain, that sends signals down your brain stem to your spine, and all those nerves go out to every part of the body. And when there's stress on the nervous system, there's a whole physiologic cascade that changes here. We've gone over this in previous webinars. We're not going to go through this in great detail. You can review our previous webinars on this. But when you're under stress, a couple things that I want to point out is your pain levels go up because your inflammation response goes up. And then also what goes down is your immune system. So when you have low back pain, when you have pain going on in your body, consider that your immune system is compromised at some level. And so what we wanna do is not only help you feel better, but make sure your body is functioning well, including your nervous system, your immune system and all other systems in the body here. So as we like to say, your Behaviors are driven by your beliefs and what you believe about your health. And our premise about your health is healthy is normal, sick is abnormal. Healthy has become, or um, healthy is normal, sick is abnormal, sick has become the new normal. We're here to change that and promote third tier health care. And this is all about health promotion. We know your body's smart, it's intelligent, and it wants to be healthy. Your nervous system is the master system and control system and your spine is your suit of armor. Modern life is unnaturally stressful. Three types of stress, thoughts, traumas, toxins. Tonight, we're gonna to be focusing on the physical. What can we do to help strengthen the muscles on the spine to help protect your uh, lower back and your health here? Because low back issues can be coming from macro traumas, car accidents, slips and falls, sports injuries, and birth trauma. Anybody here ever born? Eight out of 10 children when you're born actually have an issue within their spine here. So low back issues can date back many years ago. And 
It could be from repetitiveness, uh, such as yard work, doing things like that. And it's really today is the micro traumas and it's the tech and the technology. Sitting at the computer, sitting is literally becoming the new smoking out there. And that creates a condition of, called subluxation, which is a misaligned bone causing stress to your nervous system. When there's stress to your nervous system, simply the body's not gonna work properly and it elicits more of that stress response. So how do you know if you have subluxation? You simply get checked for that. And that's what chiropractors do. We check for subluxations to see if this is a root cause of your low back issue. And if it is, then we give our recommendations based off of two things, our objective findings and what your health goals are. So now we're gonna turn into what to start doing, what to stop doing, because I find that my clients are most empowered when we can teach you things to help support your health and wellness. Now we're gonna dive into the action steps right here. And so uh, the three-legged stool of best results, keep your adjustments in rhythm, break bad habits, and now we're gonna focus on exercise to strengthen the muscles along your spine to help your adjustments hold better. The wise doctor told me to start my exercise program very gradually. Today, I drove past a sto store that sells sweatpants. Okay, all right, hopefully that got a couple chuckles out there. So let's move. So at home, what I'd like you to do and how you're gonna get the most out of this, and if you have any family members with you, and I hope you do, it's great to have them join in. Here's what we're gonna be covering. And so now we're gonna play a little bit of uh, tennis back and forth here. And I'm gonna do my best to hit the correct buttons here so we don't have any technical subluxations. And this is gonna be super powerful, super educational and informational here. Okay, so here's the wall sit. We're gonna do the wall sit is gonna be the first exercise. So it, what I'd like you to do while we're going through this is see if you can find a wall that you're gonna be able to lean against here so you can actually practice this. So I'm gonna take the spotlight off of me and then I am going to hit the stop share. Okay, and now we should have Meredith here. Can we get some hands up if you can see Meredith? Okay, I think we got some hands going right here, okay. All right, so Meredith, we talked about the wall sit here. So I'm gonna turn things over to you. Uh, what do our clients, your clients need to know about a wall sit and uh, what are some of the things they should avoid considering this? Well, first of all, thank you for that excellent information. I hope everybody was listening closely to those tidbits of um, facts that you are handing out to us because they are so very important for us to live a strong, healthy, long life. Um, moving on though to the wall sit, if you are up and out of your chair, I want you to find a wall that you can lean against and it should be a sturdy one. You can also use a door. I would recommend using a door that opens towards you and not away from you, just in case it's not latched fully. Otherwise you could end up seeing Dr. Brandon tomorrow. <laughs> so we don't want that to happen. <laughs> So want to take you back. I'm going to go through the exercise and cue it as if you were in front of me and I was uh, taking you through, ex through the exercise yourself. So I want you to walk back up against the wall or the door and you are going to lean up against it and you're going to start to walk your feet forward. We want your feet pretty far forward so that when you slide down into the wall sit, your knees are at about a 90 degree angle and your femur, the large bone on the leg, is parallel to the floor. That's the goal. Not everyone's going to make it there, but that, that's the goal. And if you have knee issues, um, we'll hit that as well. So I want you to slide down the wall or your door. You should be able to see your toes just off the end of your knees. So if you can't see your toes, you know that your feet are too far, too far behind you and too close to the wall. You also should be drawing the abdominal wall in, which will push the low back into the wall. So we want a nice strong core pushing the low back into the wall. The shoulder blade should be touching as well, and your head. Your arms are relaxed, and well, you could sit here and read a book if you wanted to. Right, Dr. Brandon? Yeah, ex exactly. 
So this is your well sit. It's very simple. There are lots of uh, things that benefits this. If you have low back pain, this is one of the one of the four or five things that I try with a client when they first come to me if they have low back pain. For many people, this will correct that or get them out of pain pretty quickly. It's a great strengthening tool for your quads, your hip flexors, your hamstrings, and your core. And it also focuses on posture. Posture and alignment are extremely important for strengthening your back. Absolutely. Now, Meredith, let's say if any of our, uh, our, our listeners here tonight, they might be dealing with, um, I don't know, let's just pick on the knee. They're having a knee issue. Are there, are there some, uh, some maybe intermediary, intermediary steps or like uh, some modifications that somebody, if that seems to be too stressful on a joint such as the knee that they, that they could start with? When somebody has some knee pain during the wall sick, I oftentimes look at their feet first. I want to make sure their feet are aligned with their hips and that they're far enough forward so that they're not um, driving through, through the toe of the foot or the ball of the foot. So when you're in the wall sit, which I didn't mention, you want to make sure your heels are pressed into the ground and you should be able to wiggle your toes. That generally will resolve the knee issue. Another key piece is to maybe activate, activate the glutes before going into the wall sit. Yeah. But that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. Well, I, I'm gonna share, you know, what you've ingrained and burned into my nervous system when doing these exercises is squeeze the cheeks. So everybody out there, make sure, I think just about with every one of these exercises you're gonna go through, make sure you are squeezing the cheeks out there, okay? Most people that I've found is that their uh, glutes are so weak because they've been deconditioned because we're not using them because you're sitting on them. And so they become weaker. And if you're not using it, you lose it type thing. They become atrophied. So such a great point about making sure that the weight is on the heels. Lynn, is there anything from uh, anything else to add uh, that you see? No, I, I say, Meredith, why don't you talk a little bit about how long you should stay in that wall sit? Um, well, um, you can stay in that wall sit as long as you are not in any pain in any of your joints. We, um, I will often have clients hold it up for uh, up to about a minute. That would be my first goal for somebody is to make it up to a minute, but they may start in only 15 or 20 second, second increments. And on occasion, we do have a wall sit challenge in the studio where some clients have made it up to five, six, and seven minutes holding that position. But that takes some time to get there. But well, Meredith, maybe we, we can maybe we can sync up in the month of May and do a wall sit challenge or some sort of challenge for our yes. clients here. I, I love that advice. And so, if you're listening here, Meredith gave you a goal to work towards one minute. And I just want to let you know, it's all about progress, not perfection. So wherever you're at, meet your body where it's at, go to where your body is comfortable doing it, and then build upon it. I can tr trust me on this. I've seen it personally. I've seen it with our clients. I know Meredith and Lynn will back me up on this. Is start, know where your body is at, and then start building slowly and gradually. Give your soft tissues and your joints time to acclimate and adapt. If you have not been doing any of these exercises, now is not the time in one night or one day or one week to try to make up for two or three years. Just slowly start gradually building. Your body will respond and it will become stronger over time. And yes, set your goals and build up. Great job, Grace, on uh, adding that. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to move on to the next one right here. Uh, great job on that. And let's see here. Okay, so the next, oh, great one right here, squat. Love this one. This one's gonna be great. Um, so Meredith, why don't you go ahead and take over? Let's learn more about the squat. If, if, if I had my hand up for what is the most important one out of the things we're gonna go through, this one is gonna help in so many ways. So let me uh, bring this down. Okay. The squat is probably one of the number one core exercises that you can do. I love to see uh, everybody doing squats all the time. Weighted 
body weight, partial squats, full squats, whatever works for your body is what you're trying to attain with this exercise. A squat can be performed. Uh, when I teach somebody, or when I take somebody through a squat, I'm really looking to see how their hips move as they, and how their shoulders move as they start with a squat position. And easiest thing to do is a little bit, of, I'm gonna step back a little bit so you can see me better, is you're gonna find a natural, comfortable position for you. Not everybody's squat's gonna be the same. Some people will be a little wider, some people will be a little narrow. Whatever is comfortable for you and your knees is where we're going to start. And you simply sit back like you're sitting into a chair. You can reach forward, you can hold your hands in front of you like in a prayer whatever is comfortable for you. So that's the front view of the squat. And again, my range of motion is gonna be different than everybody else's range of motion. I've been doing squats since I was little and never stopped. So I still have my full range of motion, but you may recognize this picture that Dr. Brandon set out in the uh, link to join the webinar of the little kid squatting. Um, from the side, same motion. Make sure the butt goes back. The core stays drawn and tight. This is where the core comes into play and in strengthening the spine and the low back. So we tighten up, we sink the hips back and we drop the hips down into the squat. And then we push up through. The last thing to do, squeeze the glutes as you're coming up out of the squat. Now, many people can start freestanding just like I did, or you may have a ball at home, which I know a lot of my clients do. And you can start by using a ball as a marker. Same thing, find the ball and then stand back up out of it. A chair works just as well or a box like I have over in the corner. Uh, so good, I, I love that. And, uh, and, and what I'm starting to pick up here, I know we're only under a second uh, exercise, but there's common themes, right? From the things that you're saying. It's like Most when you're definitely. doing- it, you're doing the squat. We talked about the wall sit. When you're in the wall sit, make sure that weight and pressure is on your heels. I heard you say that with the squat. When you go down, make sure that the weight is not on the balls of the feet. It's on the heels so that when you get down at the squat, wherever your range is at this moment, you can basically lift up your toes and wiggle your toes. But if you're on your toes and the pressure is there and your knees are in front of your toes, you're gonna to now start causing some, uh, you're gonna cause some knee issues right there. Plus then, would we say squeeze the cheeks, right everybody? Squeeze those cheekies, okay? And then that's where the power is gonna be in the lift right there. I've seen so many people trying to use their back again because they're it's starting to sound like a broken record here, but their, their glutes are not engaged because they've been so deconditioned, which could be the root of a lot of low back issues. So. We, we think of the squat as fundamental as far as uh, what, um, getting out of bed, getting off of um, you know, the toilet, uh, getting in and out of your car, getting in and out of the chair, sitting down. I mean, the squat is a fundamental activity. You're out gardening, you're doing work, uh, you're bending forward, you know, lifting groceries, yard, you know, kids, if you have young kids, I mean, this can be applied to so many situ uh, situations and scenarios out there. So, um, Lynn, do you? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing to take away from everything that Meredith's doing is it's all about your form. So there's so much power in doing any of these exercises without thinking about holding onto a weight. Get your, get your body in the right position. Listen to all those cues. Yes, you wanna move into it gradually, but don't think that you're gonna, to only, the only way that you're gonna get benefit out of it is to add weight to your body. Your body is very, very powerful. What the key here is listen to those cues. And once you get that down, you can move forward from there. And for anybody that has any concerns about balance issues and then doing this, it comes up in questions for me is don't, do not be concerned uh, about um, or shy of putting a chair next to you or something where you can put your hand on it, just where you feel a little bit more secure as you're starting to build the strength uh, during the squat. Meredith, anything uh, else to add regarding the squat to, to wrap this one up? Well, the squat is, it's basically a sit to stand. So anytime you're seated in a chair or in on a couch, you are doing a squat. So if you are able to do that, if you're able to get up off of your couch, you are able to do a squat. And most people don't 
put those, uh, connect those dots and put that puzzle together and think that they can't do a squat. Well, you do squats every day uh, and you need to practice them every day. So you got to find what works for you. And obviously, just like you said, you have to listen to your pain uh, or you have to listen to your body. And if there's pain, then we make some adjustments on that. But if you have a chair at home that you're watching TV in, you're getting up from it. That means you're doing a squat and you're also sitting down to it. That also means you're doing a squat. So get those legs moving and start strengthening the glutes and the core. So I love all my goal setters out there. You're saying, okay, what, what are we going to do? My challenge is to you, we talked about a minute for the wall sit to work up to. If you can already hit that with ease and you can go beyond it, but that's what the challenge is going to be. And then here, I'm going to challenge you to work up to doing 20 squats per day. That is going to be my challenge. And that's what I've challenged my clients to do. If you can't do 20, you need to start with one. Just start with one a day, work up to one, then to two, the two to four, just keep building up. And again, give your body time, it will adapt and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and we'll move on to uh, our next uh, exercise here. Okay, what do we have next? All right, we have the Superman or Superwoman here. So this is a phenomenal one, one of my favorites that I personally enjoy doing. All right, I had to switch switch the screen view a little bit so you can see me down on the floor. Um, so find a, a mat or a massage table if you can't get down on the floor and you are down on your belly for the Supermans. Uh, so you wanna have enough space for your arms and legs, make sure I do. We want the arms to reach out long and the legs to extend out long. We're trying to make, we're not going for height with this. We are going for lengthening and extending and activating the posterior chain, which includes the whole backside of the body, the glutes, especially the low back and the muscles in between the shoulder blades. We do want, my head's gonna be up because I'm talking to you guys, but we want your neck in a neutral position. So you're looking at the floor when you do the lift. And the lift is simply, legs come up and arms come up at the same time. It's a lift and a reach. So we wanna extend, lift and hold, tighten the glutes, the low back, the abdominals, the shoulder blade region, and then lower back down. That's one rep. These can be done slowly, they can be done quickly, or they can be simply a hold. Just like the wall sit, you can see how long you can hold this. Okay, and, and so we got all kinds, we can take this in a lot of ways and variations along the way. Um, a thing that I would recommend too is that is a great starting. I always like lifting uh, your, let's say left arm and your opposite leg, or then your right arm and then the left leg is a good variation. What if, uh, uh, what is the demonstration that you did? What if that was, if, if we needed a, a intermediary step or a modification to that, is there, is there another starting point to that one? There is, we call it swimmers here at the studio. And the swimmers are just what you were saying. It's an alternating arm and leg reach. So we have uh, right arm, left leg lifted, left up arm, right leg. So that's right. your base move. You could even take it more simple to a single arm, single leg. Believe it or not, there are lots of people out there that can't lift the arm off the floor that high or the leg. So it does take some practice yes. for all of those. Okay, outstanding. So we're trying to cover basis here for as broad of an audience that we have. So many of you are on here and uh, we're, we're, hitting, we're hitting a lot of areas. If you do have a personal question that is new, unique to you or your situation, we're not addressing it, type it up into the chat and uh, we'll circle back around and then we'll get it there. Is there something you would like to add anything to, to this one? Such a, this is such a great exercise there. Um, no, I yeah. Don't I, I think through through all of these though, like you just that exercise is not meant to in, in, induce any pain. So like Meredith is showing the modifications to it. If you're starting to do that and you're feeling it in your lower back, that's that's telling you something. So again, so listen to your body. We had a question for a pregnancy modification. So this is the pregnancy modification. Beautiful. 
All right, or again, same thing, single arm, single leg. With the pregnancy, there's a lot of pull, depending on how pregnant you are, there's a lot of pull on the lumbar spine. So you wanna only do it if you're not getting too much of pull in the low back, or maybe just take it simply one leg. And when you are extending the leg, it's a straight out extension. It's not a Jane Fonda, take yeah. the leg up in the air. All right, yeah. it's a straight out extension. So we're just contracting the glute while we maintain that spinal continuity in the lumbar. Okay, well, that, that's our third one in a row where we have a theme of squeeze the cheek, engage the glute. Are you all seeing the pattern here and the importance of these exercises and what muscles to be firing to help strengthen your lower back and bulletproof your lower back? I hope you're seeing this uh, here. There's definitely a pattern. All right, so our goal setters out there, the people are like, okay, I got it. Well, just tell me what I need to do. Are we on a, a like do three sets of 10 of those every other day or three, three days a week? What do you suggest, Meredith, uh, for as a good starting point um, for people? With exercises like this, I like to do a time, a time setting. So maybe working up to a minute of actual motion, whatever the motion is they've chosen to do, whether it's alternating arm and leg lift or both arms, both legs, try to maintain some kind of motion or activation for a full minute. Great. And I love kind of it. move. Because the distinction of the way you teach, and I love your philosophy, is everything you're teaching are functional movements. So these are very practical to help you with modern living today. So I always appreciate that about the things that you're teaching. That's an important point I, I, we, had, we didn't really bring up yet. Okay, let's go on to the next one here. Okay, ooh, curl ups. This one looks fun. Everybody loves about doing crunches or sit ups or curls. Well, this one's a curl up right here strengthens your stomach, abdominal muscles. So let's learn more about this to help our lower back. All right, with the curl up, I really like to teach people a little bit differently, um, a little bit differently than probably what you've ta been taught in the past. But what I want, what I would want people to do with the curl up is, let's see if I can get a good side view here. We want that lower back region to be on the floor, which you can't see because I'm black on black. I'm sorry about that, but we want your low back on the floor. So I like to start by tucking the pelvis under and the fingers, the fingertips or your hands are gonna go under your rear end rather than under your low back. When you put them under the low back, it makes tend to arch the back. And we want to go the opposite direction. We wanna tuck the pelvis, put the fingertips under the glutes and then you'll extend the leg out and you're actually already in the curl up position. And from, from there, you just lower down and then you lift back up. Now the curl up itself is a lift to the ceiling. It's not a curling forward, trying to take your chin to your knees or your thighs. We want it to be a lift up. So we press the low back into the floor, contract the abdominal wall and lift the sternum right up towards the ceiling. And the next stays in the neutral position. That's your motion. Yeah, just so many great pointers right there. You know, the back pressed against the ground, just little things like that, that is gonna make all the difference in the world to add value. Um, Lynn, is there anything that you would like to add with this one? Yeah, fan fantastic job on that one. Excellent. Okay, let's see what we got next here. All right, the bridge, the bridge, bridges. Lynn, Lynn's saying the best here, okay? So Lynn, Lynn's raising her hand on this one. She, she has a vote and what she likes is the top one we're gonna be teaching. So, all right, let's learn about the bridge here, Meredith. The bridge is a basic move. Almost all of my clients do it every time they come into the studio in mm -hmm. some manner. 
uh, depending on the individual and what their goals are, we have them do some type of glute, act glute activation, which you've been hitting the, the point is our glutes have been deactivated because we sit all day long and we really need to activate them. So this is a basic, simple way to get the glutes active uh, without injuring anything. It's, and also it helps to uh, release the spine at the same time. So again, another good one if you've got some low back pain or even some T-spine pain up in there. So to start the bridge, we want the feet, you can check them out before you lie down, if you can see them. Um, you want your feet in line with your knees, your knees in line with your hips, and then you're back down on the floor. Uh, I like all my clients to lie with their palms up because that opens, because that opens the shoulder joint and then the core is, is uh, contracted and stabilized in the spine. And then we contract the glutes and we lift the hips up off the floor. Now, again, not everybody will make, go to the same height. Sorry, my, my hamstring is cramping. Um, not everyone will hit the same height uh, with their bridge, but that's the main motion. The goal is to get a straight line from your shoulders all the way down to the knees without any arch in the lumbar spine and with the hips nice and open in the front. Another piece of this puzzle is that our hip flexors are so tight and weak from sitting that a lot of people can't get to that full extension. So that's another great thing about this bridge. We get the glute activation, we get the hip opening, and we also strengthen the core by keeping the abdominals tight to stabilize the lumbar spine as we go up into the move. Beautiful. And Lynn, I can I can see your point as Meredith this is describing this of why this is one of the fundamentals here. So for those of you that are, are paying attention here and listening in, raise your hand if you're having thoracic, that would be mid-back pain. Anybody on here that computer, our, our desk jockeys, uh, people like that that are sitting so much right between the mid-back, upper back, um, this is a great exercise for that area too. And is it fair to say, Meredith, that if somebody is having low back pain when they're doing this, they're not activating the right muscles on the lift? So again, it sounds like we're a broken record, but it's glutes again is going to be the primary lift uh, for your body. And if you're trying to lift with your lower back, you're, you're just going to end up injuring yourself. Is that, is that fair? Yes. Oftentimes we see, uh, oftentimes I'll see somebody hyperextend their lumbar spine, which then compresses those vertebrae together and causes them some spasming back there. So we definitely don't want that. So that's a, it's a quick and easy fix. If I'm, if somebody's watching, uh, they may not know it on their own. I've definitely had many people tell me they are, they do bridges on their own, but it bothers their low back. Oftentimes it's it's a simple tweak of the body positioning, and then they actually activate the glutes rather than the lumbar, which is what we're looking for. And when you're, when you're driving through you know, the lower leg and the foot, again, the emphasis is the pressure is on the heel, not your toes, correct? Yes, you can uh, definitely, I mean, the whole foot can be planted and solid, but there's a drive, there's more of a drive through the heel and a lift from the glute. So it's really a lift from the glute. Okay. That's the, the main focus of that, of that move. And Daisy, we couldn't agree with you more that yes, this should be taught at an early age in grade school, that if you are sitting and now, especially if you're locked into a computer and posture related issues, the world would be a lot healthier uh, because of this. So we couldn't agree with you more on that. So, all right. We didn't talk about, I know our goal setters out there or the people, our drivers like, all right, give me my action step. What do I need to do for the curl ups and for the uh, for this right here for the bridge? Uh, I, is this a timed exercise again? Are we, are we aiming for a specific time? Well, I like the bridges. I think the bridges are a, uh, you know, they're a dynamic functional movement. So you could go with the timed. You could also go with repetition. I would, I would, I lean toward repetition on the bridges. There's no rhyme or reason really, but I like to see people get at least 20 bridges yeah. uh, and, and work up from there, maybe three sets of 20. And I then we start, 
we start adding things like a one leg bridge or we add some weight to the pelvis uh, to lift up or you know some more fun stuff like that. Well, okay, so since we're on this and, and some modifications or things, we're not, we could take this a hundred different ways, but I did have one question is that, um, what's the difference of taking one of those, those uh, small balls, you know, like something like my son would have at the house that we would, like a soccer ball size and putting it between the knees. And what's the difference of why we would consider putting a band around the knees while doing that same workout? Can you can you hit on those two points? Sure, the, uh, the soccer ball at the knees or the squishy ball, uh, a lot of yoga, yogis have them. Um, that helps to, it does a couple of things, but it maintains alignment of the legs in the position. Oftentimes when people lift up with the bridge, their knees lay out to the side and we wanna keep the knees in alignment with the hips and with the feet. So the ball can simply add, it can be, something to add to be helpful with the alignment. It also adds the contraction or the, yeah, the, contra the, the squeezing of the adductors or the inner thigh muscles, which yeah. the inner thighs help to stabilize the spine or it helps to stabilize the abdominals, helps to kick on the abdominal wall. So it's another piece of the puzzle, uh, depending on what the individual's uh, goals are or maybe movement patterns that we see when they do squats or our movement assessment would be whether I added in adduction to it or put the band around their knees and have them do abduction, abduction with the band around the knees. So the knees are gonna get more external rotators into play, which mm -hmm. are your glute medius and glute minimus while you're getting the glute mas maximus squeezing up. Yeah, we, I, I mean, I see this, this is a very chronic issue for people, especially when they have hip bursitis coming in, is that they're, we're talking, when we say the glute, we're really saying the glute maximus, and but there's the glute medius and the glute minimus that can be de deconditioned also. So by putting a band around the knee and doing this one too, you're going to work those muscles. Uh, such a great add-on to that too. So great information. Let's move on to the next uh, exercise right here. All right, straight leg raises. This one's kind of a, um, a love-hate relationship right here on this one. So uh, let, let's make it as fun as possible for, our, for uh, the people that are tuning in here. So straight leg um, activation here, straight leg raises. There's not a whole lot of fun with this one, Dr. Brandon, <laughs> just saying. Um, All right, let's we'll just call it what it is, yeah. I think it's fun when I'm watching somebody do it, right? That's that's fun. But doing it yourself, I don't, I don't know. It's not a whole lot of fun. So there are a couple of pieces with this straight leg uh, raise that you can do. We want to first get, I'm going to turn sideways so you can see a little better. We want to make sure. So some people can't get into this position, so we need may need some modifications with it, but you want to be able to sit up on your sit bones. So the bottom of your pelvis should be on the floor. You shouldn't be rolled back onto your tailbone. So that's first and foremost. We want to get up on the sit bones. We want the spine to be straight and long. We don't want it to have it rounded. So if you can't get into that position, this might not be the exercise for you to start with. Um, but if you can, we pull that knee in close to the chest, hold onto it tightly, which will also help lift the spine, contract the abdominals. And then we just do a leg lift all it is, we are strengthening into the hip flexor and the quad muscle, which also in turn helps to stabilize the knee too. Um, when we're talking about knee with people with knee injuries or knee pain, this is a great exercise for them. And you can do this um, holding the knee, which I think is a little less advanced. And you can do it also straight leg, which is a little more advanced. Okay, got it. Because you have to maintain, you have to have more spinal you have to have more strength through the core in order to lift the leg up without the spine moving. Got it. So just to be clear, when you're lifting the leg, the primary muscle on this one, would you say is the abdominals? <laughs> well, or I, you know, I feel a lot in the quad and up into the hip flexor, but your core abdominal and your transverse abdominals all the way around into the lumbar region and the quadratus, those muscles all through there yep. are stabilizing the spine. 
So that leg movement is, we're doing the leg movement to make this area respond yeah. or to keep it from moving. So if it's not moving, we know your core is doing its job. So when you lift that leg up, if there's no movement in my spine, I know your core is holding it in place. If there's movement in it, then I know there's some things we need to fix. Got it. Yes, yeah, Dr. They are. Travis is doing those from home and they are tough, no doubt about it. So look, um, the, we're going through a lot of great things and we'd like to say it's like, this is one piece right here to the big puzzle of your health and wellness. And so if this exercise is either causing you pain or you literally can't get your leg off of the ground at, at this moment, it's okay. It's okay, we're, we're gonna build up to this right here. But just know that this exercise will help activate your core, which is a big part of bulletproofing your lower back along the way. And if you do have any pain while doing any of these exercises, this is the opportunity to consult with myself or Dr. Travis or then Meredith. So then we can figure out why you're having that pain and get to the root uh, cause right there. Yes, Denise, you're activating those quads there, my lady. No doubt about that right there. Okay, feel the burn. All right, so let's get into the next one right here. And Meredith, on that straight leg raise, it, it, what are we looking at here um, to give people a reasonable goal to start with? Uh, are they gonna do some reps there or what do you suggest? Uh, what I suggest is holding the position first with their quadriceps, the tops of the thighs activated as if they were pulling their kneecaps up towards their hips and tightening the core and trying to see if they can keep their core in a, in a column, a, a strong column while holding that position. If they can, for 30 seconds to a minute, I would start adding in leg raises after that. Got it, okay. I love uh, making sure we add the fundamental down before then we start adding all right, what's next on the list here? Ooh, if I have a go-to for myself personally, the one I love the most doing out of all these right here, for me, it's all about the cats and dogs. Um, yes, I've had my experience where I've had issues in my lower back uh, years ago. I mean, and just simply just doing, uh, folding some laundry and bending forward to pick a sock up off the bed I, I've you know, felt something slide in my back before. This is what's helped me recover the fastest and get back on track. But this is just a great warm up before I do any type of exercise. So let's talk about how to do the uh, cats and dogs here and then the benefits of this. Well, the cat and dog exercise or cat and cow if you're a yogi uh, is a great exercise to just get the spine moving with the head and the neck and the pelvis. Um, it it's, looks very simple and it can be very difficult uh, for people co to coordinate <laughs> these pieces of their body together. Um, it's a simple position to start in. We wanna start with the hips directly over top of the knees. Your feet can be on the toes or they can be relaxed. It's really a comfort for you. And then you want your hands directly underneath your shoulder joint. The first movement I like to teach people with the cat and dog is to tilt the pelvis under, rounding the lumbar spine, pushing the T-spine or your shoulder blade region up to the ceiling and then tucking your chin to your chest. So you have a nice big arch in your back. And then we reverse that. Uh, the same way we came into it. So we lift the head up first, we pull the shoulder blades together, and then we tilt the tailbone up. <clears throat> and that's your movement. Okay, fantastic. So I know we do have uh, um, some pregnant women that are watching in. The modification to that one is um, essentially it will be okay to drop your lumbar spine forward, but as you go back up, instead of arching it back, just leave it as a tabletop flat right there. Don't round your back forward because we don't want to create any constriction in the womb area right there. So that's the modification uh, for that. Uh, Lynn, do you have any additional, anything else to add right there? Okay, uh, love that. and. 
this exercise will create imbibition. And we've talked about this on previous webinars and imbibition is specifically helping to hydrate the disc. When you're in the office and you're warming up before your chiropractic adjustment in the wobble chair, or if you have a wobble disc at home, or if you have one of those exercise balls that Meredith uh, uh, had, has in her studio, when you're sitting and you're moving your hips side to side, front to back, when you're doing the uh, cat and dog, when you're doing these things, that movement in your lumbar spine is actually pumping uh, toxins out of the disc, and then it's drawing in blood and, and lymph and immune system and healing fluids to help hydrate your disc. Sitting is the new smoking. And when we're not moving properly, day after day, uh, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, our discs become stiff, they become brittle, and they're more likely to crack, leaving the walls vulnerable to either a tear or then where the jelly in the donut gets pushed out. So this is critically important to keep not only your lower back, but the discs of your lower back healthy here. And if you treat them well, they're going to treat you well for years to come. So that's called imbibition and a vital part of your care. You have, that looks like a wobble disc that you're sitting on. I did. I brought it out for you and then I decided to sit on it because it's really comfortable. It is. That's a great, it's a great cushion. And then you can move your hips on it side to side, back and forth. It, it's really a great thing um, and, and can help keep the lower back healthy uh, and support your care there. Okay, uh, next up on the list here, let's see where we're at. Okay, moving on from cats and dogs. All right, child's pose. What a great relaxing pose. Uh, when I do yoga or I do an exercise and I hit this at the end of my workout, I'm just so grateful to be in this. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be in this position. Uh, who's with me on that one? Because we know then you worked hard and now you did, you earned your rest here. So child's pose, take it away, Meredith. All right. Uh, many people can just go right into the child's pose, uh, but I do have some options for people that can't. So kneeling, the knees are generally together with the child's pose and the toes are pointed. So the laces of your shoes or your back of the top of your feet are on the floor. We just lean, bend forward over top of your thighs and reach your arms out long. So that's your base move for the child pose. For um, people who might be a little wider or thicker in the belly or who are pregnant, you want to take, keep the feet together and take the knees out wide and then sit back into it. Same positioning, let your head and shoulders or let your head drop to the floor and relax into this pose. And then another option, there are a lot of people that are not able to sit on their feet like this because it may bother their knees or they may be too tight in their quadriceps. So, so you can take a towel, you can take a pad uh, and it can go right underneath. That's gonna give you some, uh, take some pressure off the knee joint and allow you to go right back down into that pose with some assistance and, get, and still get the same benefit. Fantastic, I'm already feeling more relaxed here. Uh, how long, what, 30 seconds? What do you think? Is this a time? What do you think for people to, to get the benefit of this? Oh, easily 30 seconds, but I don't know. I might hold it a minute or longer. It's a, it's a really nice position. It's a relaxation. It's a great way to meditate. Uh, and it's a great release on the spinal column, uh, especially with the knees, knees apart a little bit. Yeah, I, I like that. that combining some wellness activities. So I love the idea of getting into a meditative state uh, in this one right there, uh, either putting on some nice relaxing music, uh, a meditation, a guided meditation, and even focusing on some breathing right in that position can really help deeply relax uh, the spine, the lower back, and then the body itself. 
Lynn, anything to add on this one here? No, I guess I'd ask you, Mayor, if that would be something that you would recommend doing at the end of a workout or maybe any time during the day when you're starting to feel some pressure in your lower back. I, I tend to go with what the body feels. So yes to both of those. Um, it's a great closing. It's a great mm -hmm. closing move or position for finishing up a workout because it helps to bring you back, uh, helps to ground you and bring you back down and lower the heart rate and lower your stress level. Um, but also if you are tight uh, or been sitting for a while, it's a nice position to drop down into to release the lumbar as well. Great, outstanding. Okay, we got just a couple more as we wrap up here. You guys have been doing great. Uh, continue your comments coming through here. All right, so the next one we have, ooh, pigeon stretch. Pigeon stretch, I, I feel like we should consider putting in like a little warning here right before <laughs> this one, okay? Uh, for some people, um, because I'm, I know that there's a progression to get up into this point. And so what we'll probably want to do is show a couple options, but let's start with the pigeon stretch. And if you're able to participate in this one, fantastic. If it seems to be beyond your range of motion at this moment, that's okay. There's always going to be a modification here and we can teach you how to still stretch the muscles, but in a different way. So let's get into the pigeon stretch. I'm going to show you my best pigeon stretch and you guys can laugh at me because this is definitely one that I cannot do. Now I do go into it from a downward dog position so I can start loosening things up to get my leg into position. So for people who know yoga or downward dog, I always start everybody off with the pigeon stretch in the downward dog pose. I pick the leg up that comes forward and it gets a little momentum to bring it through in front of me. Mm. Now I do a very poor pigeon pose. Uh, it, it, I am not in proper form at all. This is about the best that I can get. I'm gonna show you from the other side so you can see the other leg do it too. So I get the extension through the spine, pick the leg up and it comes under you and folds under like this. I have very poor hip mobility in this direction, so I cannot get very low. But that is my pigeon pose. And the where best one I can get head? in. Where are you feeling? Where am I? Um, well, on this side, I feel it in my left hip, like it might just pop out of socket. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very tight. So it's into. Um, so it's deep within that ball. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty deep into my intro, my uh, ro external rotators on my hip. I don't get, some people will get a deep stretch in here. I don't get any stretch here at all. It's all in the leg that's bent. People with knee issues probably won't be able to get into this either. Um, well, yes. So there are definitely lots of modifications that we can do to get this same stretch but not to this extreme. Okay. Now, what we teach in our office is one where you're on your back and it's kind of like a figure four stretch. This is probably gonna be, uh, I would say a good starting point too, if you're working your way up to the pigeon stretch. So let's demo this one. Would this be it? That's, and yes. And then here? Yep. Okay. And you grab that, the right thigh, you got it. So in this position, this is, this is again my tight hip, so I don't have very good mobility, but we want the knee that's bent to push away from the body. You can do that in a couple of manners. You can use your elbow to brace it and push it out, or you can actually do what? Contract the glutes, which mm -hmm. will help to release the hip flexor, which will then allow you to open it up a little further. So if I actually contract my glutes and push the knee, I get further that way than if I try to push it with my arm. Great. And then if you were, somebody was doing this, uh, the pigeon stretch or this figure four stretch, 
uh, you know, what, what are we looking at? Uh, three sets of 30 seconds. What do you recommend? I, I recommend doing it once you're warm. So at the end of a workout okay. and definitely holding it for at least a minute on okay. each side. Okay, fantastic. And that brings up another great point with the stretches you want to do at the end of your workout. Uh, once the body is warmed up, loosened up, uh, doing them at the end will help stretch out those warmed up muscles so they don't uh, rebound and tighten up on you right there. So doing that at the end is a, a great practice right there. And with both of these stretches, I want to emphasize one of the main muscles that you're going to be stretching out here is the piriformis muscle. And that's deep to the uh, glute muscle right underneath that piriformis muscle. Yep, exactly right there is then um, the sciatic nerve. And so when you're sitting on this and compressing it and putting pressure on it all day long and it gets super tight, this is what can put pressure on that sciatic nerve and you start to get uh, pain down the leg, uh, basically the back of the leg just below the knee. It's likely coming from this. So this is a great stretch, uh, not only to help with sciatic-like pain, but also help protect the lower back. So just a quick little option that you can do in your chair yes. at work. There's your figure four seated or your modified pigeon. Love it. Now that is a great way. So if getting up and down off of the floor is difficult, now you have a chair option here to still get the stretch in and it'll be super helpful for you. Okay, outstanding. Okay, we're on to the one of our last few here. Okay, pigeon, and then we have kneeling hip flexor stretch. Please, please, please teach people about this one. This is a chronic issue for many people that come into this office is that we're sitting too much. Um, our, you know, sitting at a desk, sitting on the couch, uh, sitting in a car, just too much sitting or activities are pulling our body forward here and the hip flexors get tight and this will have a direct impact on the lower back. So let's go to the kneeling hip flexor stretch. Most, most definitely. Uh, when the hip flexors get tight, they, they cross the body to the lumbar spine and they yank on that sucker. So when we sit all day long like this, all they do is shrink and shrink and shrink and get tight. And they also get weak. So we have to do a couple of things. We have to open them up, we have to stretch them out and we have to strengthen them. So that little fun exercise we did before, great one to strengthen, right? We also have to take care of stretching them. And the hip flexor stretch is a great way to do it. Um, I don't recommend it on a hard floor. So find yourself a pad or a rolled up towel. And if you have balance issues, find a chair so you don't fall over. So you want to kneel on your cushion and then you're gonna swing one foot forward. And that's really where I want to start people. I don't want to start them with a foot way out in front of them like they're going into a split. So I'm gonna show you from the side because it's much more effective. So we start with the leg we're gonna stretch stays on the pad and the other foot comes forward to balance us. And your hip is directly over top of your knee. Your other knee is right over top of the foot. First and foremost, very first thing we do with a hip flexor stretch is contract the glute. So I'm gonna squeeze the glute, you can see it squeeze, and that immediately tilts my pelvis under. So I go from relaxed to squeezed and tilted, and I immediately feel a stretch here. Now, if I need, if, I, if this isn't enough stretch for me, then you drive the hips forward, but you do not lose the glute squeeze. If you lose the glute squeeze, you lose the stretch in the hip flexor. So you drive forward, maintaining the squeeze in the glute, and you'll feel that run right up almost to the rib cage. If that's not deep enough for you, this is your next addition. And that should get it. If you're going here, you're not stretching your hip flexor. That's just 
I'm not even sure what's happening there, <laughs> but it's not the hip flexor. <laughs> maybe yeah. a little adductor, maybe some hamstring on this side, but we're not getting hip flexor with it. That is, that is such a great uh, a breakdown of this right here, because you bring up a, it's called a crack, uh, and no pun intended with chiropractic <laughs> here, but contract, relax, antagonist, contract. So what Meredith is saying here exactly. is you squeeze your glute. See, there's a theme here of squeezing the cheek, folks. So you squeeze your glute, and by squeezing the backside, it allows the opposite side to go ahead and then relax to be able to stretch. It'd be the same thing if you're trying to get something on the backside to stretch, is that you could track the front side. So there, there is a specific method here to that to be able to maximize your stretch. So you squeeze the glute, squeeze the cheek there to allow that hip flexor to relax and you'll get a deeper stretch there. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is the gold right here in the nuggets uh, for our clientele and your clientele and the people attending and watching this is these little tidbits. You may be doing these exercises and stretches, but there may be one or two things that if you tweaked it, you're going to amplify your results, not only help bulletproof your lower back even further, but then your overall health. Excellent. Anything else to add on that one, Meredith? Well, I have to hit that one point that you made with the crack. When you contract the glutes, it opens up the opposite muscle or relaxes the opposite muscle. And that's exactly what we're doing in the dynamic bridge. So we're yeah. contracting the glutes. The dynamic bridge, as you guys remember or may not remember, is yeah. the hip drive up. We're contracting the glutes here to open up the hip flexor on the front. Imperative, imperative to the exercise. If it's not done properly, then you're not getting what you need out of it. Yeah, like Dr. Travis says, when you're tweaking it, you weaken it. So that is yep. so true. Okay, well, fantastic. And, uh, you know, look, that, that takes us right to the end. I, I did check to see how many more exercises that we had. That was actually the last one that we had to uh, present here. And so um, what I'd like to do is let me just see here if I could pull up. There's somebody in a, uh, a child's pose. Okay, so Simone has this question right here. I'd like to take a few questions and highlight anybody as we wrap this up here to get answered. Uh, Simone asks, when I do the child's pose, my nasal passage closes and have to breathe through my mouth. Is that okay? I think that's kind of common with people doing inversion positions. So child's pose isn't a full inversion, but it's definitely your head's going below the hips. And oftentimes, especially if you have sinus issues, they will tend to close up. Is it okay? I, I think it's okay if it's okay with you, <laughs> if it's not bothering you too much. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And with everything that you're saying right there. Okay, uh, any last uh, you know comments or questions from anybody, type it up in the chat. I'd love to um, hear uh, or see in the chat box there. What is your one nugget? What's your one takeaway here? What is the one thing to start doing? What's the one thing to stop doing to help bulletproof your lower back? Uh, this is recorded since you registered for the webinar. You will get a direct email uh, with the link so that you can watch this and rewatch this. This is one of those that you want to continue to watch over and over and over. Uh, remember, this takes time, health takes time. Either every day you're getting healthier and stronger or you're getting sicker and weaker. I want you to own that. Because simply put is that your body does not stay at stasis and that the older that you get and every day that goes by is gonna be harder to reclaim your health and your strength. So by doing a little bit each and every day, which we like to teach is that if you just simply hit some singles every single day, and you are consistent with hitting those singles, is that you're gonna build high level health and wellness and those results will show downstream. You don't have to hit home runs. You don't have to hit triples. Don't even have to hit doubles. You can walk, you can bunt, you can get a single, just get on base, 
every single day, and this will add up over time here. Um, all right, so Denise has a question. Are we getting a list of those exercises? I was too busy doing them instead of writing them down. So absolutely, Denise, we're happy to uh, get those sent out. We will make sure that all the attendees get these exercises um, so you know what to be doing in between. That's a great question right there. Yeah, I love it, Stephanie, that's fantastic. I'm so much stronger since going to fitness together. So that's great, I love it. Um, and here's a nugget from Dr. Travis, modifications are possible for all stretches and exercises, absolutely. Meet your body where it's at. Pain means pay attention inside now. So listen to your body, listen to what it's saying, and it's gonna use your body as a guide. Your body is there wanting to be healthy and it's trying to teach you something. Your body's smart and intelligent. So we need to listen to it and meet the body where it's at and then we can build off of that. So let me just kind of scroll through here just real quick if there was any other questions on this. Okay, all right. So Meredith, uh, this is great. And I know some of my uh, clients here could definitely benefit from your services. Uh, what you offer is invaluable. It complements everything that we do here in this office. And so um, I think you have a special uh, that you'd like to extend to any, anybody that's here that's not a client of yours, or if there are any clients that are on here, if they have a family member, um, I think you have a, a, a special called the, the uh, FIT consult. Is that correct? That's like, correct. It's a, you want me to, I will explain okay. it. How's that? I'll take it yeah. off your shoulder for you. Go right ahead. Thank you. We, we are offering a fitness consultation and evaluation, which is about a 90 minute session plus three personal, private personal training sessions. Those can be uh, virtual or in studio. We have, uh, we actually have clients all over the country now since we've gone virtual. Um, we may even have some of them watching now out in California and over in Ohio, uh, down in Alabama. So we've, uh, some of our old clients have rejoined with us since we went virtual. Uh, and we have lots of new ones since we've gone virtual. So anyone that's not ready to come into a studio or isn't close enough to us can take these options uh, and go virtual with them as well. So we have the fit consultation plus an evaluation, which is 90 minutes, and it's assess an assessment as well. So we're going to be looking at things like your strength, your um, cardiovascular health, your mobility, your posture, all of those good things that we've talked about today. Um, and do goal setting, set some goals with you, look at your nutrition, your orthopedic, your medical history in that first 90 minutes fit consultation. From there, we will then take you through three personal training sessions uh, for 189. So 189 is a total, it's about a $400 value. As such, thank you for doing that. I just wanna say that um, I really appreciate your generosity and definitely that is, worth every cent that value there and then more um, people will learn so much about where they're at uh, they'll have a greater awareness and then based off on what goals they want to be setting then you know exactly the path to get there and i love that so much you guys offer a tremendous service as being a client myself and lynn being a client and a trainer and so on and so forth uh, we just cannot say enough. And we see some of your peeps on there giving you a shout out, Meredith, to your great work. And so um, what's the best way for um, people that are uh, watching this to get in touch with you? Well, if you can remember our name, Fitness Together, all you need to Google is Fitness Together at Fairfax and our website will pop up. And there's a link on our website. We'll send an email directly to us with your information. I can contact you that way. Or you can call me. I'm uh, at the studio at 703-250-5333. All right, fantastic. And we just want to say thank you so much, Meredith, for your time. You're super generous. This information is super helpful, super valuable. It's going to enhance the quality of life for everybody that then, you know, we talk about information is great. Implementation is everything. So once you start implementing it, uh, fantastic. We did have another question that came through. Uh, Simone also asked, great question. Should all these 10 exercises be done every day? 
That's a great question. I was also looking at the order in which we presented them. I would probably rearrange them myself uh, if I was having somebody do them into a different order that made a little more sense for the body, but uh, or a little more sense for warming up because we started with some exercises that are kind of lower key and progressed to some harder ones. And I might flip flop them around, but most definitely you can do every single one of these every single day. They are exercises that are not going to stress your body that they, so they do not need the type of recovery that you would need if you were lifting heavy weights on a regular basis. Okay, outstanding. Um, that's great information, great tips right there. And uh, definitely the order of them can make a huge difference. And so I know everybody is that is still here watching is hanging on by a thread, just like, please, Meredith, can you can you just give us some insight to what you just said? There, <laughs> they may be they may be taking that as these order the the exercises that were pre uh, presented. That's the order to do them in. Can you give uh, a just kind of an overview? Um, we don't have here. to go deep here, but just kind of give an overview of where you might modify this order for the clients that you work with. Well, I think what I would start off first with is with glute activation. So I would start people with the dynamic bridge, uh, the supermans, uh, then moving into the curl ups. So we're getting some glute into core activation the straight, straight leg raises, which then re-emphasizes the core activation. From there, we've gotten everything pretty much warmed up and moving. Then I would take you into a wall sit and a squat to follow the wall sit. And then I would take us into more of our stretching and mobility or flexibility exercises, the kneeling hip flexor, the pigeon and the cat and dog. Great. I love it. And um, Simone, uh, one of the things that I do, you know, um, very busy, obviously running um, uh, here with Lynn, uh, the practice, you know, we have, you know, I'm married, I have two kids, two young kids, and life is very busy. And I know many people that are watching this life is busy. Uh, I don't do this exact routine, um, but I do like a Tabata type uh, style uh, where you do 20 seconds on. 10 seconds off, or it's 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, I don't know if that would exactly work with this. Here's what I'm saying. I can do 12 exercises by doing that, that workout in like seven minutes. So there's, there's a lot of ways that you can slice this. And one of the biggest reasons or excuses really that I get from my client, I just don't have time doc, or I don't have all day to do these exercises. So what Meredith is saying, these are uh, at a fundamental level that you're not going to overly stress the body if you pick a level and do these ones in the order that she's uh, recommending there uh, every day. And it's not going to take very long. It, it might take a little longer just initially as you're getting into that routine, but I'm confident you can write up a very powerful uh, workout that doesn't have to take very long as a good starting point. And then you can always progress from there and like work with a great trainer um, like Meredith, who can put in more comprehensive program to help you achieve your health and wellness goals. Cool? All right, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for joining in here. Uh, if there's anybody that uh, has questions that uh, are not a client here at Pure Chiropractic, you have questions about your lower back, you have questions about sciatic related issues, numbness and tingling in your leg, and you're just wondering about where you're at as far as your spinal health, your nerve system health, and wondering if chiropractic is a uh, effective natural solution to what's going on. Uh, we do have a new patient uh, special for those uh, that are coming in. Uh, we will make sure that we post a link here, and then that'll be in the email that we send out with this replay. So if you, a family member or a friend, uh, or simply if you have not been in the office and ready to get reassessed and finding out where you're at today, now is a great time uh, to come in and get that assessment. And for those of you that are keeping rhythmic with your chiropractic adjustments, great job. You guys are action takers. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here tonight. I know that health and wellness is a high priority for you. 
Um, I hope we delivered a ton of value and over delivered on what you thought you were going to get. This is recorded. You'll be able to watch it. God bless you. Have a great night. And we look forward to May's workshop. And this is sports injury recovery. So this is going to be playing off of this one here. And we're going to expand on these concepts that we learned. So stay tuned to that. That is three weeks away. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. So thank you so much. And just remember, for you and your family's health and wellness, we've got your back. Go make it a great night. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good night.